Statistics Canada reported that 4 million people aged 20 to 29 in this country, or 44%, live with their parents, an almost three-point jump from 2001. In the U.S., 25 million adult children are living with their parents. Whatever the age of your children, whether or not they live under your roof, you're still a parent, and you want to keep those precious relationships strong. Secrets to Parenting Your Adult Child offers valuable wisdom for changes and challenges you may be facing right now. For the next few minutes, we have the luxury of a trained life coach and licensed professional counselor. Nancy Williams comes to us from Austin, Texas. She's wife and mother, two adult children. Are either of them at home? No. <laughs> ah. They have been. <laughs> Tell us about your children first. I, my older son is 32. His name is Aaron. He's a chiropractor, married, and has a precious little daughter, my first grandchild, Eliza Jane. So, and my younger son, Adam, is 30 and lives on his own nearby. And um, we're just real blessed. We have a wonderful family God's blessed us with. Now, this book doesn't come out of struggling through these issues, Nancy, <laughs> but you are well acquainted with transition. I am, and, and certainly uh, in my personal experience raising my children with my husband, and there have been times that our children have come back and lived with us. They've gone away and come back for various reasons. So we understand our nest emptying and refilling and emptying again. And then on, from the professional standpoint, I've worked with a number of parents and young adult children who are struggling just to understand this whole transition time of children becoming adults and the changing roles for both parents and their kids, and how to adapt in ways that are healthy for everyone in the family. So drawing on my personal and professional experience, I felt there was a need to offer some tools that could give both some insight and some encouragement to parents in uh, learning how to make this time of their life and this stage be the best possible and have the best relationships possible with their children. Now sociologists are saying that, you know, our young people are growing up in a very different social and economic climate, certainly different than their parents did. And that's playing a key role in why we're not getting them moved on as quickly as some would like to see. Sure. Um, some are maturing at a later rate than, than perhaps we did, than our generation did. And while some parents think that once you hit 18 or you hit graduation from high school or a university that you should be out on your own and fully ready to take care of yourself. And while some children are, some are not quite ready to take on all those responsibilities, particularly if their parents haven't released some of that responsibility on the way. And then with the economy such as it is, some children are mature enough to handle things, but not financially able to make it totally on their own as they just get going trying to establish themselves in a career and their own home, and they may need a little assistance. And then some are out there and they struggle with the loss of a job or perhaps a relationship problem, which brings them, you know, coming to their parents asking if they can move back in with them for a while. So there are a variety of, of reasons why we see their children coming back and forth or, or struggling to make it on their own and and some parents don't want to let go you know they don't want their children to struggle they don't want to have any heartaches they want things to be better for their children perhaps than they had it so they hold on to those reins tightly and some are just frankly a little bit controlling and they don't want to let go of that control and so we see all those dynamics and it makes it a real confusing time for yeah. both parents and children it's There's a whole lot mixed in there like I know yes. more education is needed now more time becoming educated yes. to be credentialed to qualify for the, the same kind of jobs. Right. And of course, buying a house, some of the things that, that are expenses are just mm -hmm. in a whole new planet. Sure. In terms of those kind of financial pressures. Sure. And parents want to help their children, and, and certainly I'm a proponent of parents supporting their children. So I'm not here to say we should wash our hands and say, you're on your own, it's your, your problem to solve. The key is knowing how to help in ways that are healthy mm -hmm. and not to come from a directing or controlling standpoint, but to come alongside our children and help support, perhaps in ways that our children aren't able to. You know, As long as you know that your children are doing all they can to mm -hmm. take care of themselves, 
and to make it on their own and to take, you know, establish themselves independently and to take charge of their lives, mm -hmm. then there are times when it may be appropriate for a parent to step in and help. Or to but, offer refuge. Right. But we need to weigh those situations carefully and not just jump in to rescue or not just wash our hands and stand back and watch them fall. I want to talk about appropriate boundaries in a moment, but I, I was introduced to a, a new word, and it didn't even come from Jim. Um, but uh, in, infantilize, infantilize, we infantilize teens by pigeonholing them, by saying, oh, you can't do this, yes. oh, you're not ready to do that, mm -hmm. oh, you're, you know, that's too much for you. Yeah. And now you've been a high school teacher. I have. And you've also uh, worked in a community college settings have, as right. a teacher. So you've had a lot of time with young people. Uh, are we doing that? And, and is it legitimate? Do, do our kids have the life skills? Are they ready to go out and take on the responsibilities of adult life? I think some are and some need a little more coaching. They need a little more time. They need a little more guidance in order to transition into that place. Um, and, and I think it's real key to recognize that one size doesn't fit all when it comes to parenting our children or equipping them. We really need to look at each child individually to, to look at their strengths, to look at their struggles, to look at their vulnerabilities, and then determine how to help guide them through a transition time to the place where they can be as independent as possible on their own. Even parents who deal with children who have handicaps, you know, you want to look at that child and say, now that that handicapped child is becoming an adult, what can we do to help that child, he or, he or she, be as self-sufficient as they can be? Mm -hmm. And how do we come along then and offer the additional support that might be supplementary? But again, I think the parent's role is to supplement, not to lead and guide and direct. And that's hard for parents. It's hard mm -hmm. for us to let go of those controls. Mm -hmm. But it is so important. And I think you made such a good point. It's important for us to build a sense of confidence and a sense of hope in our children that we believe they can do a good job, they can take charge of their lives, and they can learn what they don't already know to make life be all that God intends for it to be for them. And you want to see growth, not everybody getting stuck and mired. Absolutely, in a situation. absolutely. You know, it's not funny really, but in some ways it kind of is. Um, more than half of Italian men aged 25 to 35 <laughs> still live with mama <laughs> and you know one article i read just said well why leave the luxury hotel you know your laundry's mm -hmm. done the food's great you can go and have your travel <clears throat> and and your toys and mm -hmm. you it's it you got a made in the shade now <laughs> culturally for some people it, right. it, having everybody all together is is a happy thing right but right. obviously in italy they're talking about changing the law to make those guys get out at 18. I don't know where they're at with that, but um, it's I'm, not a happy situation. No, and I'm a proponent of families getting together and sharing time with each other. I mean, I love it when my children come over and, and we're all together as a family. But once again, you know, I think it's so important that we see that young adult child taking the lead in, in designing and directing their lives and controlling their lives and, and making their own choices. And, you know, is this a product of a lazy child that doesn't want to assume responsibility or a mother who doesn't want to let go and a child that doesn't want to disrespect? And so as parents, we have to be careful that we don't set a tone that our children feel like if they want to do things on their own and, and declare that independence and step out, that they're disrespecting their parents. Now, one